recording just outside of Roubaix. Welcome to the GCN show. Welcome to the GCN show, brought to you by Wiggle. This week it's a Paris Roubaix special. How did Peter Sagan? Finally win. It's another big week in the world of tech with a new sprocket introduced by Campagnolo. Yep, that is 12 now, people. 12 sprockets. We also have new shades from Oakley. And a new crank set from 3T. Unfortunately, though, we have to start this week's GCN show with some extremely sad news. A tragedy struck the cycling world on Sunday as Belgian rider Michael Gerlach of Verandas Willems passed away in hospital, having reportedly suffered a heart attack whilst riding Paris-Roubaix. Yeah, he crashed at around the 100 kilometer mark and was airlifted to hospital in Lille, where unfortunately he could not be revived. He was just 23 years of age. And all of us here at GCN would like to pass on our heartfelt condolences to his family, his friends and his teammates. I think it is worth mentioning, Si, that professional cyclists at world tour level, but also at pro continental level, do undergo regular medical screening, uh, which includes specific checks of the heart. In fact, some pro riders have been forced to retire prematurely because of what the tests have thrown up. But obviously, these tests don't foresee everything. Yeah, very true. Uh, now, fortunately, there was also much to celebrate in the world of cycling this week, like the fact that there's seemingly a whole generation of young people in London who are turning their backs on gang culture and actually replacing it with bike riding. Yeah, bikes up, knives down is the hashtag. And in fact, thousands took to the streets at the weekend to protest against the escalating levels of knife crime in England's capital. Side by side and shoulder to shoulder, in fact, with policemen and women on their bikes as well. Yeah. That footage is taken from the Bikes Up Knives Down documentary, by the way, which is uh, well worth a watch. The link is in the description. There's no hierarchy. There's no one better than someone else. It's done a lot for me as well. It's like helped me go on a, a different path, and it's the path that I chose. I've chosen to progress with bikes and use my time, my anger, my happiness, my stress, and put all my emotions into bettering my talent on a bike. Some amazing skills on show as well. Uh, now, we also learned this week that what we all think we know about cycling technique may well be about to go out the window because Smooth is out and the Ikebe shuffle may well be coming in. Yep, this is Sadeo Ikebe, who's been causing quite a stir over on Zwift Racing. Uh, this is him, in fact, over at the recent CVR World Cup. And he attributes his quite impressive riding, in part down to this unique style on the bike, because he says it optimises his body position. Hmm. Uh, now, also this week, we were privileged to watch a true master at work. Peter Sagan absolutely dominated Paris Bay on Sunday to take his first win at the race. I think it's fair to say that the entire cycling world has been waiting quite expectantly for this win at Paris Bay for Peter Sagan. I mean, his results prior to this year haven't been anything special by his standards, and he's been quite inconsistent too. So, what was the difference this time around? How did he win it? Well, can I say the obvious first of all? He was flipping strong, wasn't he? I mean, Nicky. Quite obvious. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, Nicky Terpstra said as much. In fact, post race, uh, he said that his team Quickstep couldn't do any more, and that actually the strongest man won on the day. Although I was thinking, he did look an awful lot stronger this week compared to the Tour of Flanders. Do you think he was actually in better shape? Well, he did drop the group of main favourites over the last climb of the Passivo, didn't True. he? But then didn't make much inroads into Terpstra's lead after that. But then Sagan is always strong, and that is half the problem for him. Yeah, I guess so. So what has made the difference then? Luck. <gasps> Uh, I'm not sure you can say that. No, don't worry. I'm not saying that he had good luck. What I'm saying is that he avoided bad luck, and that's half the battle, as we know, in this race. So he didn't have any punctures, he didn't have any mechanical problems, and he avoided the multitude of crashes around him. I'm pretty sure, though, we've said in the past that actually you kind of make your own luck to a certain extent in bike racing. Don't you? Like in the past, Peter Sagan has bunny hopped his way out of crashes, like over Fabian Cancellara. Well, that is true. Impressive. So there must be more to it even than that. What about his team? Well, so here's the point. I wonder whether actually he's starting to get his head around Paris. He was always in the right place, wasn't he? And he's got his team to thank largely for that. They seem particularly well drilled. And actually, I think we've got to say uh, that they ignored our advice. Uh, it's seemingly that they were riding 100% for Peter Sagan, uh, as opposed to giving Daniel Loss a free reign, which was uh, <clears throat> what we suggested. Yeah. 
there were a couple of fleeting moments where Ross looked like he was given a bit of freedom and I thought we might come back into the set here, record the show and actually look like we knew what we were talking about. Oh, yeah. But it wasn't to be. No. So he did have a fantastic team on the day but take nothing away from his own performance because that attack did look perfectly timed, didn't it? Oh, absolutely. It was one of those fleeting moments where it just seemed like, whereas normally all eyes are on him, no one was looking his no. way, were they? So he had no one on his wheel when he went. And then when he did go, everyone just seemingly looked at each other to try and pass the responsibility. So by the time someone did get around to chasing, the horse had already bolted. Yeah, very and true. And he was going that well, it was going to be pretty tough to bring him back. Well, it was. They couldn't, could they? Uh, I think enough, yeah. the breakaway riders from the early break of the day also had a factor in the ultimate outcome of the race, didn't they? Because somewhat remarkably, Sagan seemed to manage to persuade all three of them to start working with him almost as soon as he bridged across. And still, it's that little, that's what does it, isn't it? Yeah. As soon as you get there, come on, I wish he hadn't done that, otherwise it wouldn't have worked. <laughs> but Silvan Dille, in particular, was immensely strong, wasn't he? Almost giving equal turns to Sagan all the way to the Roubaix Velodrome. Yeah. Now, Many people were probably wondering just why he was giving Sagan equal turns, given that the fact that they did arrive at the Virgin together, it was going to be a foregone conclusion, or you would have thought. But I think it's worth remembering that second place at Paris Bay is a phenomenal result, particularly for someone like Dillier, who has yet to land a big one. And indeed, his team, Agent de Zelle Mondial, will be pretty thankful for second place, I just thought, at yeah, Paris Bay. French team. Yeah, so he did work with Sagan. Sagan didn't drop him, and he managed to claim second place. Although I. I do have a sneaking suspicion that maybe Sagan did try yeah. and drop him at Carrefour de Labra and couldn't. And Dillier I... wasn't a formality in the sprint. No, I think the same. But they both ended up getting what they wanted, essentially. They did indeed, they? yeah. There was also a tailwind, maybe clutching at straws slightly here, but there was a point where under the impetus of Terpster, the gap did start to come down inside the last 10 k But when you've got a tailwind, you just roll along a lot easier, don't you? Yeah. I think Sagan was tired by the end. But he timed that attack perfectly, didn't he? So we got the gap. Anyway, there we go. It all adds up to Sagan's second monument win after the first at Flanders in 2016. So I guess it comes back to that that question again, Dan. Where does Sagan feature now in the all-time list of cycling greats? Oh, my word. Well, we did come in for a bit of flack, didn't we, in the comment section beneath the Paris Bay preview show? Because we had quoted a tweet from Richard Moore where he listed a uh, current crop of riders who've won more monuments than Peter Sagan. But his fans are pointing out to us that he's still only 28 and significantly younger than some of those listed. That's a valid point. But don't forget that Tom Bonin had won five monuments by the time he was 29, mm. hadn't he? Although, admittedly, only one world championship. But I suppose what separates Sagan, at least in my eyes, is the sheer scope of the races that he's won. I mean, Tour of California overall. Bonin never won anything quite like that, did he? So maybe Paris Bay is a, is a sign that he's reaching maturity and the floodgates are going to open. Well, we might get an indication of where the floodgates have opened this coming Sunday, because I think. He's down to ride the Amstel Gold Race. Not a monument, but one of the biggest one-day races outside of them. Imagine the Roubaix Amstel Double. Has that been done before? The famous Roubaix Amstel Double. Yeah. I'm not, I have no idea. I don't think so. Let us know in the comments below if somebody has. Yeah. And you know what? To a certain extent, it's kind of irrelevant whether or not he gets the Roubaix Amstel Double or however many monuments that he does win in his career. Because we spent all day talking about Peter Sagan. We regularly do. And I think a lot of people out there talk about Peter Sagan all the time. And I think that's why he is so great, isn't he? He's so great for cycling because mm. no matter what he does, he's just interesting. Well, this is rather awkward. What's that? I'm in complete agreement. What a terrible way to finish a segment, just yeah. by agreeing. Well done, mate. Let's not leave it there, mate. Let's talk about our race predictions. Mass Pedersen. Well, there was a point where I thought John Danekob and Trek were working for the Danish oh, yeah. champion. Then and then I realised that he was riding on the front for Jasper Stoy and then he got dropped. Yeah. Wow, Van Aert. He might have won, uh, but he punctured a crucial sector. Uh, but perhaps the embarrassing thing, Dan, was actually that I got his number of world championship cyclocross victories wrong. <laughs> uh, and uh, and then worse still was that when I read that in the comments, it took me a blooming long time to work out which of his world titles I'd missed. And then even more embarrassingly, I realised that the one I'd missed was actually the one I'd gone and watched and been there seeing him cross the line in Zolda. That was a bit strange. Why would you not remember that one? I don't know. Really strange, isn't it? Bizarre. Don't know. Anyway, we should probably give a quick shout out to John Cannings who managed to predict the race winner correctly. Well done, John. Yeah, very quick shout out. Peter Sagan. 
beginner's luck. The GCN club launched yesterday and unfortunately it did not go smoothly. We've had Bottlegate and now so I think we can also say that we've had Sockgate. Yeah, we're not going to point the finger at the person whose fault it was, but only because they've just left the room, as uh, you can probably tell. The fridge, however, is full of his beer, so he's not gone unpunished. Yeah. And now, seriously, though, uh, the website, due to demand, did unfortunately crash yesterday, and so it's delayed many of you from signing up. And for that, we apologise sincerely. It must have been incredibly frustrating, and frankly, it does fall short of the level of service that we feel you guys deserve from us. However, we also need to add in a thanks there. While yesterday we were working on website fixes and trying to reach a solution, we were inundated with plenty of kind, understanding, and very funny messages, emails, and tweets. And when we were able to start taking your subscription details, we were truly amazed by your response. Yeah, so what comes next, Blasty? Well, we'll make sure that everyone who wants to join our club can. A very few who signed up earlier may just miss the first wave of memberships. So. Yeah, but we were on the phone to our factory in Italy asking them to make more socks just this morning. Simple as that, really. So for those of you that have signed up to the club already, we will be in touch over the next couple of days and getting those first founder socks out to you. And we're very, very excited about our club. We're going to start with socks. Very nice, custom designed to our specification cycling socks at that. And after that, it's really over to you. We want you to play a huge part in where the GCN club goes next. Yeah, like everything at GCN. You want different design socks? Let us know. You want something other than socks? Just get in touch. Give us your feedback. We do genuinely love hearing from you. Absolutely. And thanks again for all of your support. It is truly, truly humbling. Yeah. Now, you may be wondering how exactly we're going to get Lloydie back for the rest of the show, but here's a trick that you might not know about. You ready, Dan? He's coming. Oh, don't drink it. It's now time for cycling shorts. We're going to start cycling shorts with a few tidbits from Paris Roubaix. Like the fact that the youngest finisher in 50 years crossed the line at the Hallowed Velodrome on Sunday. Yes, at just 19 years of age, Tongi Turgis, a runner for Vital Concept, crossed the line in 42nd place. Uh, what I particularly liked about this story was the fact that he crossed the line with his older brother Jimmy, who rides for rival Team Confidus. Yeah, that's cool, isn't it? Uh, now, in finishing 42nd, Turgis also became the second placed French finisher in this year's Does event. that mean he rolled his brother Jimmy on the line? He did roll Jimmy, yeah. Making it a great result for Tangi, but not a great result for the host nation, two in the top 42. No, not great. No. Meanwhile, somebody who's most definitely missed at Paris Bay on Sunday is the living legend that is Tom Bonin, who of course retired straight after the event last year. However, he has still been managing to hit the headlines on the run up to the race this year. That's right. So in an interview on Belgian TV, Bonin doesn't dismiss the allegations that Fabian Cancellara had used a bike with a hidden motor in during the 2010 Classic season. Now, we are not experts at Flemish. In fact, you know this because we can't even pronounce it. However, we have it on good authority that perhaps something may have got lost in translation and that Boonen doesn't suggest this after all. Yeah. Flemish speaking people, what did he really say? Let us know. Yeah. Somewhat ironically, Tom Bonin does now race with a motor, doesn't he? Yeah, he Although does. the one that he raced with did blow up before the end of the race on Sunday. That's right. Uh, Boonen is into motorsport now and it was engine failure in his Porsche, apparently. But he did say there was a silver lining and that he got to watch the last 50 kilometers of Paris Bay. Wow. Yeah. Right, well, Head of the North is quite famous for the number of crashes that take place, and Sunday was no different. Uh, one of the worst ones looked to be that of Tony Martin, Luke Rowe, and Alexander Kristoff when they hit the deck. Uh, it wasn't actually on one of the cobbled sectors, but Kristoff lost a hell of a lot of skin as this Instagram post goes to show. Oh. That has got to be seriously sore. Yeah. Doesn't it just? Uh, right, now finally from Cycling Shorts, another reason why Peter Zagan may have wanted to have kept Sylvain Delier with him in the run into Roubaix was if he's seen the research that's just been published in the International Journal of Sports Physiology and Performance. He probably did see that. It's certainly one of my favourites. Well, and mine too as well, actually, yeah. Huh? Now, the research has shown that a cyclist will perform better when racing an opponent, even a virtual one. So in the case of Sagan, he will have obviously gone faster from sharing the pace, but actually he will have tried harder as well, thereby almost guaranteeing 
that he wouldn't get caught by the chase crew. And there was us thinking that the incentive of winning Paris Bay would be enough on its own. Well, yeah. I'm just going to show you though that software like Zwift will indeed help you to go faster. Yeah. Isn't it? And finding your training partner as well. There you go. I've got a sneaky suspicion that people that ride with me go faster when they ride with me. I don't think they would drop me if they were on their own. It is time now for the GCN Wiggle of Fortune. No doubt you will know the score by now, but to remind you, there are five prizes on offer and four of them are vouchers. Prize number four is 25 pounds, prize three is 50, prize two is 75, and then the big one is 150 pounds of Wiggle vouchers. Oh yeah, and this week's contestant is Duncan Crouch from Australia. Although, Duncan tells us he is actually a Brit. He's been living in Australia for eight years now. He said he loves riding in the Adelaide Hills year round. And he also says he's got a penchant for Belgian beer, but Duncan, step away from our fridge. That is property of Dan. Although, Dan can only get his hands on it if the wheel stops. On that little icon there, the beer icon. That's right, prize number five is Dan gets a beer. Yeah. Right, are we ready? Pretty sure, Duncan, even wheel. though you're a Brit in Australia, I've got to say that the wheel spins perfectly without tampering. That's right. Oh my goodness. Low blow. Put it in the comment section. Sorry, guys. Right, Just three. Sledging. Two, one. Spin the wheel, spin the wheel. Come on. Right, where's it going to start? Where's it going to start? You got your arm and beer down? Yeah. Ooh, this looks good. This looks good for your beer, mate. Oh, come on. Dan's going to get. Oh. Oh, no! Oh, I thought he was going to stop on the beer. Oh, well. Prize for then, £25. And we're his way straight to you. Yeah, now we've got to have a bit of a recap of previous weeks as well. So we had Linda Findlay, who won in week one. She bought herself a nice new pair of Oakleys. Hmm. Meanwhile, was it Sean Bolger? Bolger, that's right. Yeah, well, he crashed his bike recently and scrapped his jersey. So he's going to buy a new jersey, but he's also sharing his voucher with his younger brother, which is very nice. Ah, oh, awful, isn't it? When you get into an ambulance, even though you've already got a scuffed jersey, and then they get the scissors out and cut it off. Yeah, that is you know, quite bad. That cost? Yeah, that is bad. Uh, right now, if you want to take part in next week's GCN Wiggle of Fortune, then in the description beneath this video, there is a link, and you stick your name down once you've clicked through to that, and then we will select someone at random to be next week's Duncan Crouch. Some big news in the tech world this week. We've got ourselves another sprocket. A twelfth, and that's courtesy of serial sprocket adders, Campagnolo. Yes, they always seem to be the first to add that extra sprocket. They, they do. I remember it for nine speed, for ten speed, and eleven speed, possibly eight speed before that. I don't really remember. Uh, but they have now added twelve to. Well, they haven't added twelve. They've got two twelve <laughs> with their flagship group set, which is super record, and also the one below their record group set. Yeah. Why don't they just add two? And that would just. Blitz the opposition. Yeah, so like, oh my god, they've got 13. <laughs> anyway, there we go. Uh, now, many of you obviously will be thinking, well, SRAM have already done it with their Eagle mountain bike group sets, but Campagnolo are the first to do it on the road. I'm not too sure, though, whether it's going to add particularly much to your conventional bike with two chain rings on the front. I can see why this would be extremely beneficial if you're running one by because you could have that nice range of gears and it will reduce the ratio gap between each one of those. But I don't know about you. I don't tend to run out of gears with two by 11. However, if you do want those extra gears, uh, the new cassettes will be available as an option of either 11 to 29 or 11 to 32. We will, of course, have all the details on the new Campanella group set right up here, in fact, uh, on the GCN Tech Show coming up this week. But for now, I wanted to draw your attention to something whilst we're kind of vaguely thinking about one by, because this is the new one by specific 3T Torno Limited crank set, and it's an absolute work of art. You can tell it's one by because it's only got one chain ring, but also because of that, they've managed to narrow and clean up the whole ensemble. Now, the chainring itself is actually custom made by Wolf Tooth Components. It's got that distinctive narrow wide profile, and it's custom made, as you can see, it's got a unique bolt pattern there, which again helps to neaten the whole thing up. And in use, 3T say that it makes it the thinnest and most aero crank set ever. Now, as you can tell, it is a full carbon crank set. It weighs just 445 grams. That's with a 40 tooth chain ring. Weight weenies will probably recognize the quite distinctive look. It is indeed made from the THM factory, which is now owned, of course, by 3T. Now, 
as you can probably tell from the look of this 3T Explorer, it has already been exploring. And in use, probably the most distinctive thing, aside from the look, is actually the fact that the Q factor is significantly narrower. It's down to just 142 millimeters wide, meaning that when you get used to it, theoretically, your feet will also be in a more aerodynamic position as well. Aero feet, it's a thing. Oakley have released two new models of shades uh, just recently. The first of those which you can see now are the flight jackets. The novelty here being a small button located on the nose bridge which Oakley are calling the advancer. Now you will use this to push the glasses slightly further away from your face which apparently prevents them from fogging up. Uh, or conversely, if you're starting to get a bit hot, you press that button because that extra gap means there's more airflow behind the glasses. That sounds great, Dan, but it's probably of no relevance to me whatsoever. No, no, you need a two advancer buttons on your armpits <laughs> or your jersey, don't you, to... Move there is no technology under the sun, from. mate, that can help me in that department. Uh, now, the second pair of glasses are these, the field jackets, which, as you can see, have a dual lens design. And I hope they say that both these new ones have what's called their prism technology, which enhances both colour and contrast. So it sounds a bit like your own Instagram filter everywhere you go. That's pretty days. cool, isn't it? Yeah. I just use HDR, full, 100% whack it up. You need to acclimatise to life in HDR, I think, don't you? Otherwise, you'd probably be like a gibbering wreck by, <laughs> yeah. by lunchtime. Last week, the Tour of California announced the 18 teams who will be participating in this year's event, and along with the team, some of the star riders who will be there as well. And it looks like we're going to get a real sprint fest on a flat stage because Marcel Kittel is confirmed, as is Mark Cavendish, Caleb Ewan, and of course, Peter Sagan, who absolutely loves that race. Oh yeah, it's gonna be great, isn't it? Uh, one surprise omission, though, was Team Aqua Blue Sports. Now, you would have thought that they would have been a shoe in given that they've got the current US national champion, Larry Warbass, on the team. Poor guys just can't seem to catch a break this year, can they? No, they really need to step it up a gear, I think. Is that a joke about one by? It Jen? was, yeah. Very poor. <laughs> very sorry. Moving yeah. straight on. Uh, the incredibly tough week that is the tour, the Basque Country concluded on Saturday, and it was the first ever overall World Tour race win for former ski jumper Primoz Roglic of Lotto NL Yumbo. Uh, he laid the foundations for that win by finishing runner up to Julian Alaphilippe, who is flying uh, on both the first and the second stages. He then won the time trial, which gave him a really comfortable gap over everyone, including the eventual second place finisher, Mikel Lander. Yeah, holding off the Movistar team on that final day it was no mean feat, was no. it? Very impressive. You know, he just continues to impress, but such is his rate of progression that it's actually hard to know exactly what type of rider he's eventually going to become, isn't mm -hmm. it? I mean, this year's Tour de France could be an opportunity yeah. for him to take it up a notch. I'd quite like to see how he'd get on at the Ardennes Classics, which yeah. is starting next week, but unfortunately, it doesn't look like he's down to ride any of them. Oh. One rider, though, who is riding them, and looks very much ready for them, is Lotto Sudau's Thomas Marchinski. This is the current state of his legs. Whoa! Yes. That's impressive. I've not seen legs like that since riding behind you last summer. You really think they look like mine? <laughs> no, nothing like yours. Oh, no, sorry, mate. They are mighty impressive legs, aren't they? As are yours, to yes, be fair. You've geez. got great legs. It's giveaway time now. We've got three prizes on offer for three lucky potential winners this week. That's right. So we have three bike computer bundles to give away, courtesy of our friends over at Wahoo. So we've got the Wahoo Element over there, and with that you will win additional cadence, heart rate, and speed sensors. Then we've got the Element Bolt, which, if you hadn't noticed, Peter Sagan was using when he won at Paris Roubaix just the other day. Uh, that too comes with a cadence, speed, and heart rate sensor. And then third prize is the Wahoo Element Mini, which comes with an additional speed sensor. Wow, some top prizes to be had there. Oh, yeah. Uh, all the details on how to enter can be found if you follow the link which is in the description below this video. Uh, we also have a winner to announce. Oh, we do. Video. One very lucky winner. It's a big one. It is the Orbea Orca M20 Team D with the option of the Mayo custom paint job. And we have a winner. Oh. I think this one definitely deserves a drum roll. Careful not to knock the white off for something. See? <laughs> right, <laughs> so that you. winner is Mark. Thomas of oh. Montclair, New Jersey in the USA. Congratulations, Mark. Yeah, there's more than one Mark Thomas out there. Uh, we will be in contact uh, until you will know it was you. And apologies if there is another one. If you don't hear from us, it wasn't you. Oh, that's cruel. Yes. That's so cruel. Now, it, there's only going to be one in Montclair, yeah. New Jersey, isn't there? Uh, make sure you let us have a look at your Mayo design as well. Really want to see what you come up with. Oh, and make sure you get involved by entering this one. Link's in the description, remember. Hack 
forward slash body of the week time. Now don't forget to use the hashtag GCN hack on social media uh, if you would like to show us any of your hacks and bodges. Love the first one this week, Go sent on. in on Facebook by Patrick Topham. You just hack or bodge. That is an amazing piece of kit right there, isn't it? Oh yeah. I mean, that's going to make your car quite unwieldy, I'd have thought, but it certainly looks like quite a piece of engineering. A homemade bike rack. Congratulations. It says, says bodge on the back of the car though. Yeah, it's cruel though. I think it's more of a hack. Yeah, I really like that. I think it's a lovely piece of kit. Absolutely. Hack. This one, if you've got rattly valve stems, then Marius Tell has got an idea for you. That's not the prettiest. That's hack. gotta be a bodge. I'm sure it works and stops your valve stems from rattling, but there's gotta be neater solutions yeah. than that. What that was wrong with a bit of insulating tape? Yeah, that's a bodge. You know, yeah. good Sorry. thinking, but that's a total bodge. <laughs> this is gotta be a bodge, isn't it? Whoa. From Bo Yu Lu. Uh, when you forget your shoe covers and it's 20 degrees out, presumably means Fahrenheit as opposed to Celsius. I mean, I presume it would keep your feet a little bit warmer than if you didn't wear them, but it looks weird. Yeah, I'm glad that's going under your shoe as opposed to over your shoe, but uh, <laughs> nevertheless, yeah. I mean, in ingenious, I suppose. Uh, yeah, still a bodge. Still a bodge. But there we go. Uh, right, what about these though? Sticking with the feet theme, uh, Veruca Overshoes, right? So uh, Aidan Ryder, who was apparently eight today from Edinburgh Road Club, uh, couldn't find small enough waterproof overshoes, so he made a pair from Veruca socks. There we go, aero and waterproof. Now, is that a hack, Dan? I'd right. say so. They I think, think that is. They're very snug, aren't they? Uh, that was actually a tweet from a little while ago, so happy birthday for some, some time ago there, Aidan. <laughs> He's now 12. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, here's one from William Amaral, uh, ultimate epic road bike. Lack of bar tape, suspension forks, kind of a mountain bike with some bare drop bars and some mountain bike STI levers. Bodge. The Maybe reach on. on that would be epic. Mm. That's like a Graham O'Brien type position. Uh, now this one is uh, is interesting. Oh, I've never seen anything like that before. No, I just I can't, I can't quite understand how that's a thing. But there we go. Uh, why not hang your bike from the wing of your plane when you're going flying? Yeah, places. sent in by Pauline Janet Simmons. Is uh, that with a gun as well? Like a touring bike and a, I've no and a machine gun? Not a solution many people need to find in life, is no. it? How to transport your bike on your own private plane. Just buy a bike bag and stick it in the hold. That's what works for me. Right, this one's definitely a bodge. I'm calling it right away. What? Uh, from Dan Butler, a rutting bike. <laughs> now we've seen similar experiments before, haven't we, here on Happy yeah. Bodge, but I've never seen so many different bar ends and hand positions on one Nor bike. in the wild either. Often they're sort of like artificially engineered in a, in a laboratory setting, but that generally looks like a, a bike with antlers in the wild. There's just, there's just too many options there. Well, you wouldn't even know where to start putting your hands, would you? Well, imagine having a crash. Imagine how many things there are to impale yourself on. People think disc brakes are dangerous. Look at the antler bike. Terrifying. Anyway, don't forget to keep sending your hacks and bodges in using the hashtag Gs in Hack. Uh, we check Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Caption competition. Last week's photo was this one from the podium of the Tour of Flanders. Oh, it was an easy one, that one. First up, not the winner, I hasten to add, but we had this sent in from Tim Williams' side. Have a read of that. Oh, Nikki, you're so fine. You're so fine. You blow my wine. Hey, Nikki. Hey, Nikki. See, he fell straight for that. All Tim wanted to see you do was sing on the show. So okay, he wanted to, to win a bottle, didn't he? Sorry, Tim. Dan's yes. in a funny well, that's mood That's a better guy seeing you sing, isn't it? <laughs> uh, the person who will be receiving a GCN Camelback water bottle through the post is Max Freeman, who put caption, drink little and often, otherwise you're a quick step away from bonking. Well done, Max. Get in touch with us on Facebook with a message and we'll get That was soon. a good one, to be fair. It was. From Max, yeah. No, Tim. Sorry, that, that was deserving of the victory. This week's photo comes from the final Cobble Classic Paris-Roubaix and it's Peter Sagan and Sai is going to get us started. <laughs> well, I'm not sure about that, Dan. <clears throat> People think I've got a chip on my shoulder, but uh, it's actually a cobble. That was your worst Sagan impression. He's been practicing this before we started recording. Oh, you can't do an impression of Peter Sagan. Sagan. No, no, he you can't. He was afraid of getting Sagan fans irate in the comments. I think I've got everyone irate with that effort. Right? <laughs> uh, leave your captions in the comment section below and we'll choose a winner of Fed Bottle this time next week. Now, before we get on to what is coming up on the channel this week, as always, we would like to have a quick recap over some of the amazing and funny comments you've been leaving under last week's videos, such as this one from Humberto Leandro, 
Uh, Matt said, when on cobbles, stay in the saddle and do not hold the hoods. Then at the end of the video, he grabs onto the hoods and sprints out of the saddle uphill on cobbles. So yeah, there we go, typical Matt for you. Yeah, I did have a chuckle myself with that when I watched <laughs> my own video back. Uh, Michael McDermott put uh, underneath the uh, Parry Bay preview, size beer reminds me of when my granddad was put in a care home and three months later we found a full chamber pot under his bed. Ugh. It was a blooming good beer, that one. Yeah, went straight to his head. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it did, actually. Uh, right then, uh, this last one from uh, Jay Mees. 55 PSI, that's all it needs. Uh, yeah, that's what I would say after struggling to manage one puncture <laughs> per kilometre through the Annenberg Forest. Yes. So, another comment about Matt there. Yeah, he just doesn't learn, Matt, does he, from <laughs> no. his own mistakes. Yeah. Right then, coming up on the channel this week. On Wednesday, we are showing you how to corner safely. Thursday, we show you the top 10 views from a road bike. Friday is Ask GT Anything. Yeah, and then this weekend, we've got another ride to do before you die. That's right, Matt and Emma this time got to go to a European destination, which we'll find out on Saturday. Uh, you will get a nice bit of behind the scenes look, and then on Sunday, you get the ride itself. It should be absolutely brilliant. I'm pretty jealous about missing out on that one. Uh, and then on Monday is, of course, the GCN Racing News Show, where Dan will no doubt be recapping Amstel Gold. I will indeed. And then on Tuesday, we are back right here in the set. Right, we are unfortunately getting towards the end of the GCN show now, but don't worry, there is still time for Extreme Corner. And this week, it's an absolute belter from Rim Nakamura, a BMX rider from Japan. Ducky's got some serious talent, hasn't he? Yeah, I like that. Well, I think I could have done that last trick. Well, the skid. Yes. <laughs> right, that is pretty much the end of this week's GCN show. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, you can click on the thumbs up button located just below this video. Uh, make sure you head over to the shop as well, which you'll find a link to on the screen if you'd like to get your hands on any GCN merchandise. Yep, and if you want to watch another video now, why not check out that mid-range bike versus superbike video that went up just last weekend. Plenty of comments under that one. Make sure you get involved.